You've been in politics for 35 years. What are some of your biggest accomplishments? You know, for the last 35 years, I've really had the deepest honor to represent the people of Central Virginia on City Council in the House of Delegates and then 28 years in the Senate of Virginia. There are a number of items that really come to mind. One is I've had an opportunity to uh, pass a lot of bills related to transportation, mental health, education, and of course I've been on the money writing, the budget committee for so long, and there's just so much that comes through that committee that is important to Central Virginia. And so then being there for 35 years and working with lawmakers, obviously you had some wins, but also there's probably some things that didn't get passed or didn't get worked on that you were hoping. What are some of those areas where you wish that in your time you could have seen more work done or you could have seen more things passed? You know, last year I introduced an inland port bill and the Senate of Virginia was so nice to actually fund that. And they came in and did a extensive study and our region is just not quite right for an inland port. But this year we came back with funding to go into Region 2000 to look for rail-centric and other large developments that can happen in this area. That money I think will really help and I'm looking forward to others carrying that torch the rest of the way. What are some of the biggest takeaways that you've had during your career? A few things. One, the people of Central Virginia are so kind and my family has been so gracious to me, my wife Kim and my boys, and now a small little grandchild. The other one is that the Senate of Virginia is different. They're different than the House or Congress. The Senate of Virginia is a very collegial body, and I think you'll find that uh, those people that uh, have spoken about my retirement, there are Republicans and Democrats, and there's a lot of individuals all over the Capitol that I hope that I've had a uh, impact on their lives, not just for legislation, but just personally as well. Right, and then kind of going off of that, over these last three decades that you've worked, how have you witnessed and seen politics and just the atmosphere in even uh, Richmond change and shift over those years? The best part is, is that while politics has gotten meaner and more difficult, the Senate of Virginia is this enclave where Senator Saslaw, the majority leader, and minority leader Senator Normand, and Louise Lucas, and Mark Peak, and so many of us have always remained friends. You know, we are, have a responsibility, I think, to get along with people that we don't agree with. And the Senate of Virginia has really done that. We argue to the end, but ultimately uh, we are collegial to each other. Right. And then so obviously 35 years in your career, 35 years in politics, what's next? That's a great question. I'm looking forward to spending more time with my family, my wife Kim, my two boys, and that grandchild. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'll never say never uh, as far as uh, entering public service again, but for right now, uh, there's a season for everything, and the season today is to let others uh, be able to serve, and I'm looking forward to having some time off. And so obviously kind of with those political shifts, one of the biggest political shifts this year, particularly is the redistricting. Yeah. It would have pitted or put Mark Peake in your district. Did that have any um, correlation or any, well, let me say, yeah. I guess, did that play a role in your decision to retire this year, particularly? You know, 10 years ago, um, Ralph Smith said that if you want to run, because we were put together, then I will not run. This year, Mark Peake said that if I wanted to run, he would, he would bow out. And I'm very grateful to Mark. The great thing about leaving at this time is that I do know that it's gonna be left in good hands because Mark Peak is an extraordinary individual. So we're looking forward to working with Mark, but as his constituent. And so finally, if you could give kind of a couple, I know you can't sum it up in one sentence, but just even kind of just a short little statement about your time in your 35 years, particularly at Richmond, what would you say? What would you say to the people that you've been serving? You know, I think your basic character, love God and love people, can be applied to almost everything out there. That is, uh, whether or not you carry a haughty spirit or a servant's heart. It's uh, whether or not uh, you work well with people who disagree with you or not. So to me, it's about being a public servant and then also working with all people, whether they agree with me or not. And then kind of you'll now be looking at the General Assembly from kind of an outside standpoint, mm -hmm. but you obviously were, were had an inside look. Going into that, the next coming years and the next sessions, how, what do you think you'll take away from that? What are you looking forward to? What do you think will be the future of that now that you're going to kind of be looking from the outside looking in? 
You know, there's a lot of changes that will take place in the Senate of Virginia, and some people are beginning concerned because some think that the right is getting more right and the left is getting more left. And uh, so I'm somewhat concerned about that, but I've never tried to confuse uh, maybe optimism with hope. I have great hope because I think the individuals that are still left in the Senate of Virginia can carry on that spirit, that collegiality, that working together across the aisle to try to get things done, even when they disagree on some of the bigger issues. And to those individuals and to your fellow lawmakers and colleagues, what's your message to them over the last 35 years and during your time in Richmond and just working in politics? Well, I was almost speechless by the statements that were made by some of my colleagues, both Republicans and Democrats, who have just been very kind over the last 24 hours, as I've let them know. So um, to me, in a lot of ways, it makes me think maybe I've run the race that was before me and finished the task. And uh, we all hope that we hear well done. And obviously, how did your time in Richmond and how has your 35 years in politics kind of molded you and how have you grown during that time? What have you seen from just your character and from your personal experiences? You know, I've learned so much. When you start at age 23, that's an age where you think you know everything and you don't know anything. And uh, I've just had the great opportunity for the last 35 years to be able to grow with some of the most extraordinary people uh, in the Commonwealth, both in the Senate and the House and just gotten so close to so many governors, especially Governor Yunkin uh, today. And I suspect that uh, that experience is probably the greatest leadership training anyone could ever receive. And so I'm grateful to have had that opportunity. Finally, what's one of your favorite memories you have? Mm. You know, uh, it's tough to say. I would, I would um, let me think for a second. That's such a good question that I didn't <laughs> anticipate it though. Um, I guess there, there are two, two experiences that I'll recall. One is when we were fighting uh, for the individuals that, that were at the training center. And uh, it's a bit emotional for me because I think God told us to take care of people who cannot take care of themselves. And to see my Senate colleagues uh, rally behind us and support and love those individuals uh, that need our help was a was a big deal. The other one was probably, as I'm leaving the Senate, just to see maybe in retrospect the impact you've had on lives as people reach out and talk about times they've been able to uh, witness you and uh, find that uh, you may have been kind to them or uh, been charitable to them. That just means a lot to me. And is there anything else that I did not add that you would like to get out to the community, to get out to Virginia, your colleagues, anyone, your family, anything that you'd like to add? You know, Today is really a big thank you. Thank you to people who, who have for, let me start again. Um, today is really a, just a big thank you. Just a big thank you to people throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia, Central Virginia, who have voted for me for many years, volunteered, donated, been really a big part of my life. And uh, while we have enjoyed representing this area for 35 years, my family and I are just so grateful for the opportunity this has given us. Well, thank you, Senator Newman, and thank you for what you've done for the Commonwealth. Good. Thank you.